Hey guys, I'm back with my video response to episode 243. 243. A fine ranty episode there, guys. Um, and Pappy, I don't think you're burning bridges. Who gives a crap about John Mayer, right? Who cares? But you know what? Your rants are one of the things that makes the bliss interesting. Being, and I don't think it's really a rant per se, but it's more about being passionate about something. And passion has no boundaries. No boundaries. So you could essentially go as crazy as you want. Because that's what I want to hear. I want to hear you go absolutely nuts. You know, because if you believe in something strong enough, you go out and you prove it. Some people protest. Some people rant. Some people talk about it on a podcast. Now, I don't want you to change. Because that's what I hope for every time I have a new episode that I'm going to listen to. I think... I want to hear Pappy rant about something because, you know, you talk about it, yeah, you might go off a little bit here and there, but that's what makes it interesting and that is what's more important is what makes it real. You know, it makes it, just like you're saying about bloggers, you know, bloggers, it, people prefer to re read a review from a blog because it's an honest review. And, and another thing, like most blogs, they, they, don't, they don't really have a lot of sponsors and that sort of thing, so if they're going to bag it out, they don't like it, they'll tell you they don't like it and they'll tell you why they don't like it. Yeah, some things are biased here and there, but I just I think a lot of guitar magazines are terribly biased when it comes to that sort of thing. So let's talk about it. Guitar magazines. It's basically the Rant Guitar Magazine podcast, and uh, I don't buy guitar magazines anymore. For one, in Australia, they cost a crap load of money. Uh, for example, Guitar World ranges every now and then from around seventeen dollars to twenty dollars for Guitar World. Uh, it's nice and colourful with a lot of advertising in there, poorly written articles. And yeah, it is for a niche market. It is for metal and I'm, I'm really getting sick of seeing you know, Jimi Hendrix or Jimmy Page or anyone else named Jimmy on the cover of, um, of Guitar Magazines. Yeah, they're inspirational players. They're great. You know, they're the benchmark, a lot of things. But been there, done that. You've seen that sort of stuff before. Uh, and yeah, I mean, yeah, it's cool, but... You know what, I, I actually prefer magazines that just talk about gear rather than um, the musicians themselves because I get a lot of gas and, you know, I've got to release. Anyway, so, yeah, I feel your pain with the magazines and that's why I don't buy them. I like Premier Guitar. I like going online and looking at it. And it's not to say I wouldn't buy a magazine if I actually enjoyed it. Um, I did like Guitar One when that was around. And there was another, I can't remember what it was, like the first one I bought when I was like 17. And I just remember it was packed with information. Packed, and I, and I remember that. That were the magazines that back in the days, the, um, the Talitcher was in black and white, which is crazy, right? But, yeah, I'd, again, and I don't, tabs are everywhere. Although in saying that, the tabs in guitar magazines are gen generally, um, who knows if they're actually more accurate to the way the artists play them, but they sound very similar. And you know that they're not going to skimp when, they, when it comes up to sort of tabs and things like that. They're, they're going to make it sound like the song. You know, if you, if you just go on the internet and get some tab that some dude did in his room because he thinks he can play guitar, nine times out of ten, it's going to be wrong. You know, a lot of it's going to be wrong. Um, you can piece it together. You can get a lot of tabs, piece them together. The only tabs that that I really go off these days would be um, like guitar pro tabs and things like that. Something that you can play and hear and say, okay, is that it? But ne not necessarily do, do you follow the tabs note for note or tab for tab. You know, you follow it and then you, whatever you hear. So in, in that respect, I think it's good that it has some tabs in there, but yeah, I mean, then again, who, who plays off the tabs in the magazines these days anyway, I guess, is, is the argument here. But yeah, I, I agree. I don't buy guitar magazines anymore. And PT, when you told me that you got a subscription to Guitar Player, $20 for 18 issues, I almost fell off my chair. Actually, I was driving and I almost fell off my chair while I was inside my car with my car doors locked. $20 for 18 issues. That is absolutely amazing. See, that's another reason why I should move to the States because... Um, the price is like that, who can complain? But I'd still complain, don't worry, Pappy, I'll rant too. So, um, I checked out Fretboard Journal. It's a kind of cool website. The, the books are sort of more in a, a 
I guess you call it more of a book, it looks like a book rather than a magazine, more of like a square sort of thing. They seem to be, from the quick glimpse I saw, focused a lot on sort of acoustic guitars, but that could just be the quick glimpse I saw of them. I'd like to get my hands on one of those magazines one day. I can only imagine how much it will cost when I get into this country. So uh, I guess that's not happening. But um, yeah, the, the thing about magazines is I enjoy reading them when I'm on the toilet. I'm not going to you know, sugarcoat what I'm doing. When I go to the toilet to do number two, I'll sit there 20 minutes, half an hour. I've already finished, but I'll read the magazines. I'll read any rubbish that's in there. I'll stare at the pictures. To be quite honest, I stare at the pictures more and uh, I don't really read too much in the magazines unless it's about a band that I really like. Uh, I really don't read a lot about older artists and things like that. Like, I'm, just, I'm just not interested. You know, I guess everyone's different. But um, yeah, I, I like the music, I'm just not too interested about reading about them because it's different now. You know, like the way that it's always about the origins and how they got into it. You know, there was a luck, there was a scout here, this happened, you know, they played one gig and that. Yeah, you know, things things are a little bit different from my perspective now that we have the internet, the technology. Um, it's a little bit different, you know, and I, I find it sometimes a little bit hard to relate to. Um, not that I play gigs or anything like that, but anyway. So I, I generally don't read a lot of the um, articles, and this is only really Guitar World. That's the only magazine I buy. Um, well, I don't buy any more. I, I'd like to be on the hunt for other guitar magazines, but there really aren't very many, not very many at all. There is an Australian guitar magazine, and that's kind of boring. Kind of boring. I don't know if they still publish it, but it's, it's kind of boring. So anyway, that's enough of my rant about magazines, because like you guys, I could go on about this forever, forever. And um, yeah, I'm not going to. I'm going to move on to my next point here. Um, I like that new segment on the press releases and that sort of thing. That sounded cool how you're in the bathroom there, Pappy. Um, let's talk about Mun and their boring headstock. The most boring headstock I've ever seen in my life. They want to patent that. Look, I, I understand yes and no, but who cares? Because if you want a Martin, you will buy a Martin. You know what? If you want a Harold, a Gerald, a Thomas, a Pappy, a PT, a Pipes, you will buy one of those. So who cares if it looks the same? Who gives a crap? You know, from, from, a, from a serious musician's perspective, you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Because if you want that brand name, you will get that brand name. When I was young and dumb, I wanted a Fender. So I bought a Fender. You know, doesn't play any better than any of the other guitars I bought. But I bought one because I wanted the name. I think that that's important, yeah. But you know, a Martin headstock is just a, a boring, squarish sort of headstock. I guess rectangularish. It's not like some of the elaborate headstocks you see out there. You know, it's not it's not a PRS headstock, is it? You know, it's not even the Fender headstocks. That's they're icons, you know. Or Gibson headstock. You know, you, you know what it is. Um, it's it's yeah. I think it's a bit weird, but I guess they're trying to protect themselves as well and so forth. But taking it a little bit too far, but then again, it is a business perspective and they're protecting their investment. So, but yeah, that's just a bit weird. Uh, what have I got here? Talked about the bloggers here. Um, that's pretty much all. There was a lot of content there, but I just took down a few little things so I don't rant too much and there goes my uh, phone. Okay, we're back. The phone rang again. Every time I record a video, the phone rings. She doesn't stop ringing these days. So, um... What have we got next? Let's talk about something I know you want to rant about. You no, know, PT, I think Pappy really took over and ranted a lot on this episode. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about PCs crashing versus Macs. Now, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to rant about this a little bit. Uh, I'm a fan of Apple. I'm a fan of their iPhone not working properly many, many times. And each update progressively made it worse until now. Um, I have though, although I am a fan of the Mac, I want one day so I can use it and utilize it. I used to think that you needed a Mac to uh, record music. I thought that was a necessity, you know, Apple, that's industry standard, this is what they do, blah, blah. Yes, if you want Pro Tools and all that sort of crap. Yes, if you want to record GarageBand, which I'm not a fan of, but anyway, that's just me. I think it's, you know, there are much, much, much better programs out there. 
but anyway, for for um, yeah, for a little bit extra like Reaper, or um, God, you can you can do so much with Audacity. But yeah, I'm. I, I just find it funny when someone will go out, like my my music teacher. Oh, I went out and I got a Mac so I can record music. Yeah, I'm gonna do it on Garage Band. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Good stuff. Good for you. You know that's cool. You know, yeah, it seems better than PC. Okay, that's where it stops. Now, I used to work in the IT industry, and if your computer is breaking down on you, it's either because you bought a cheap computer, you don't maintain it properly, or you don't know how to use it, or you load it up with crappy programs, or you download a bunch of illegal crap and you constantly fill it up, and who knows what other rubbish you'll have on there. My computer is a PC, and by today's standards, it's not so great. But when I built it, it was, in a better term of words, off its guts. So it doesn't break down. It doesn't skip a beat. It doesn't crash. It it just works. It renders video like that. It's it's not about the computer. It's about the user. That's what I'm going to say. It's about the user. My argument is because I know, and the reason why I get so upset is because I used to um, be a computer tech, and I used to fix people's computers on the side when I wasn't supposed to in my. Uh, company car, which I shouldn't have been doing back in the days when I had a real job, but you would get people that would ring you up at 2 o'clock in the morning, oh, my internet doesn't work, I'm like, yeah, so? I didn't touch that part. I installed your printer driver because you're, you know, you're a little bit slow. And I'm like, no, you touched it, it's your fault. Okay. Same to go, I guess, if you drive a car and you really don't know how to change your tyre, you're not always going to be able to call roadside assistant. It's knowledge that you need to have. And uh, my argument is, there's n a Mac versus a PC, they're not better than each other. They just do things sim similarly, but um, they have slightly different niche markets, you could say, in that respect. So, yeah, there's nothing these days you can't do on a PC that you, you used to be able to only exclusively do on a Mac, and most of the time vice versa. But I will say this thing, if you buy a Mac and pull Windows on it, or if you buy a Mac and even put Office on it, you've got issues. Keep it Mac. That's that's what I see when I get one. Keep it that way. Hell, they got Intel processors in them now. Watch out. No Intel in this thing. No way in hell. So anyway, that's my rant on computers and the fact that people keep bagging, bagging out PCs. But everyone's different and everyone's got a different opinion, although I'm going to go to the dark side because when I get some spare cash, I'm going to buy a MacBook Pro. So I can take it with me to do the exact same things that I do on my PC. Just be limited to a bunch of things. But anyway, so anyway, that's enough of my rant. I um, would like to say you're welcome for my video. It's a little thing out to PT speech teacher. But uh, guys, another fantastic episode. I really enjoyed it. Oh, I missed something here. I'm going to write in front of me the book. This is the only guitar repair book I ever bought. And I didn't quite understand it. I don't think it's written all that well. Um, I understand it more now because I know more about the guitar's construction and things like that. But this sort of jumps right into it. And um, it's cool. It kind of comes with these gauges, um, radius gauges and so forth, and then you know, for underneath your strings and that, which I, I never used. And then what I didn't like about it the most is the fact that it's all in imperial or inches, whatever you want to call it. But they do give you a conversion chart which doesn't really make things too much easier for me. So it just confused. When you grow up with metric, it confused the hell out of me. So I don't even read this book. I don't even like it. Um, I want another one that explains things in a simpler form so I can understand it. So Dan Early Wine, I know you're a genius, Luthier, but um, this didn't help me. Hopefully it's helped other people. Um, if anyone wants to buy this off me, if you want to pay international postage and something this big, and you want to buy this for a low price, let me know. Let me know because I don't use it. I think I paid, um, is it still on here? Right, yeah. Okay, you see that there? That says, oh, hang on, $19.95? Oh no, I paid $50 for this book. $50. But uh, I guess if I read it now, you know, a few years later, I'll probably understand more. Um, yeah, I'll give it another go, but 
look, I don't, I don't use it, so if this is going to be a benefit to anyone else, if you want it cheap, let me know. So guys, um, yeah, thanks for the awesome, awesome, awesome podcast. Hopefully my rant wasn't too bad. I tried to I tried to do it some justice, Pappy, but I just I don't think I've got it in me. So anyway, guys, um, yeah, catch you next time.